What's up guys, welcome back to Opiumation and in this video we're going to be talking about a little animation I did a couple of weeks ago and we're going to be breaking it down. It's an animation I did of a character walking up to a guitar, just picks it up and then catches it. So I'm going to be going through the process right through reference, breaking that down, how I look at it and then going through the blocking stages, what I think about there then the splining, then the end, which is the polishing. So it's just a little short video. I just wanted to explain my process, so that I say, and hopefully you can take something from it that will be of some use for you guys, okay? So before we start the video, if you could please smash that like button, that would help me a lot. Uh, I keep forgetting to say that, but please, it will help me a lot with the algorithms and all that. So thank you for that in advance. And yeah, let's dive in. So let's check this video out. All right, guys, this is a little animation I did. Uh, which I will be breaking down for you guys. So check this out. This is this little guy walking up to the car, picking it up, and just catches it. So we'll just let it play. Play again. So it's like a walk. Picks up and catches up. Okay. So that's a little animation I did. Just wanted to show you how I break it down. So the first thing I do is I get some reference. So I film using this uh, camera and I'll just show you the walk reference I used. Okay, it's a bit dark there, but basically I'm doing all these little actions. I'm trying to get the timing right and the catch going up and also the legs, I'm trying to see where the hips are. So that's like more or less my body mechanics that I've got sorted. Because if you can see here, you've got like a, just pause this. So if you look here, I'm just looking at things I'm looking at is, all right. Where's the weight? So as it, as it lands, classic weight like that. Right, I'm looking at a simple lines. Lines. I know where the weight is. Oh, shape of the body. Little things like that I'm looking at. Okay, so now I've got that down. Then what I do is I've got the catch one as well. So I'll show you that. We put the sound on there, turn that off. And I'm just like practicing the catch. But obviously I've changed it a bit, you'll see, because his back foot is going up, but in my one, the front foot goes up and then lands. So you just change it up a bit here and there, how we, mm -hmm. as you're doing the uh, animation. So I've got those two references. I'm going to use them as a guide. And then what do I do? I just initially at the start, I'm blocking in. I'm getting this camera angle and I'm blocking in the poses. So if we look here, I'll just play this. I'm just kind of blocking in, trying to get a feel for the timing, sculpting in the poses. So that's what I'm doing at the start initially. I'm just blocking in, trying to get, you know, that kind of line that we were talking about, line of action. Subtle, like, ooh, like that. And I'm trying to get it there. And I'm looking at clear silhouette poses. I mean, there's a, the guitar is hidden. There's a guitar there as well, just for timing. But I've hidden up both of those just to make it a bit more clearer for me. But I wanted to just get the timing right. And also the hips, make sure they're doing the right thing. Make sure the pose is all clear here. So here you can see I'm trying to get a nice pose line of action, which eventually as I start blocking, I end up uh, refining it a bit more. And as he comes down, he's in a cool pose with the guitar. So he's got his cool little pose and he's ready to strum or do whatever he wants to do. So what we'll do, we'll move on to the next uh, file that I got. I'll show you that. So the next one, I'm starting to refine and spline the action. So if you look here, it's already like smoothing out. And then I'm just checking the tracks of the arcs and what have you on the hips. 
and just the guitar, check and see that how that is, how that how that feels. But what I did with a guitar is I couldn't constrain it, so I've created a few guitars here. I was having troubles with the constraints, and then I just basically what I do is as he punches it, there's a duplicate guitar, so that turns off, that comes on, that's constrained on his hands. Then over from here it comes off. Then another guitar is it, and then it's constrained again, and then another one uh, appears there, so you get that little cushion. So this is where I start to refine a bit more, and I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the hips like i said same stuff you know i say the same stuff all the time you know the hips so if you go to animation visualization you can see the hips there you know the path is following it's following a nice path because the weight shift is this way first and that way and i make sure in the side view that it's nice it's coming on nicely and when he lands when he lands, he's got that nice cushion. Uh, that's because I have to make sure. It's a nice cushion because this, it goes up, up here, and then settles down. I'll show you in the side view, actually. This might be better in this view. So if you see here. So he comes down here, and it's following, as he picks up the guitar, it's following a nice arc going up, and then it follows a nice arc here, and then when it holds and he comes down, oof, could even smooth it out a bit here. But then it comes down abruptly up here and then a settle. That's, what, that's what's causing the nice cushion. It's that, the bouncing ball on the hips, as, we, as I always say. I'll always keep referring to this because this is the absolute fundamental of the animation. If you're not getting those hips right, in the right place, then everything else is going to get messed up. A perfect example of that, if I could show you quickly. So say for example, if I delete the motion trail here and I've got his hips selected. So if you look at his hips, say if I, actually, actually as a matter of fact, you know what? Let's put the motion trail back. It'd be easier to see like this. See if this, if this wasn't all clear, if this was like this and then like that, Just random. If you look at that, look, look, look how that looks. See, this is a very common thing. The reason I'm doing it, messing it all up, is because it's a really common thing when graduates, some graduates would come out and do it, especially in my days in the university. Maybe the schools are much, much more better now. But if you look at the hips now, there, you see how j jittery that is. The jitteriness is what's making it all unsmooth. So when you create those nice, when you think of the hips as nice arcs following the action, then your whole animation will look, if you just clean the hips up, it will look a bit organic and smoother. Then you can start working on from the hips up. So then I started working more on the torso, right? And the head, which followed. The hips went down. It's very simple. The hips went down, then the torso follows. And then as it comes back up, the head follows drags and then comes back same as the juice box the drag exercise we were doing so this was a uh, the phase where i was doing a lot of the splining and getting the curves right making sure the arcs are working right and the arms and what have you on the feet as well i would grab these controls and i would go to visualization create edible motion and then check out it on, on there and i would do the same for the other one I mean, you do this more in towards polishing, but I was doing it here as well. I was doing it through blocking as well, just to get the nice curves, just to make it look a bit more smoother. The more you can refine it in blocking, the easier it will come will be when you come out of uh, blocking to splining, then you've got less work to do. So what we'll do, we'll move on to the polishing phase now, and I'll show you that one. Okay, guys, so this is a set I got, and I'll put a link in the description. This guy, Sean, he's done a really good set and uh, he's got a whole lot of environments that you can use, cartoony ones, what have you, they're brilliant. Uh, so I just made it look like he was in his bedroom. But let's have a look at this. So what the other thing I've done with the motion blur, let's play it and I'll show you. Let's 
So I added a bit of motion blur there just to make it look a bit more cooler. You know, motion blur is animator's best mate, right? Now, motion blur is easy. Just go to render viewport and in viewport, you have all these settings. Just go to motion blur and enable it. I've also enabled anti-aliasing, smooth, all the way to maximum so that the end will all smooth. So this is a good way of play blasting without rendering to say save time. You can put stuff on your show really quickly then. Uh, other stuff is what? Yeah, the fall off, linear, uh, ambient. This is this is uh, what creates the darkness in the edges inside. So if I take this off, you see all the darkness is gone. Now it's come back, gone, come back. And then you can play around with the start and end. Uh, where's it gone? All right, maybe not with that. I think it's the top, sorry, the top one. What am I doing? This one. So you can play around how dark you want it, how light you want it, what have you. Wherever you like, radius as well, how much of a fall off you want. So it's all there. And here, so the, diff the difference with this shot is I'm working a bit more on the fingers and I'm just pushing it a bit more. I'm working on the eyes. So if you look now, there's some blinks. And also if you look at the hair, there's movement in the hair. So if you look here, there's movement there on the hair. And as the hair comes down there, you can see it's dragging. Actually, what I'll do just to show you, I'll just take that off for now, motion blur. But if you should look at the hair, you can see the hair comes up. And then as it comes down, it drags, even drags there, pretty extreme there. But that's the thing, and when it's in these quick in-betweens, you can do extreme poses, you'll feel it, but and you'll see it. Sorry, you'll feel it, but you won't necessarily see it. And then as it comes down, there's a settle in the hair there like a cushion, which makes it even more believable, right? And little blinks as well. And then the hand there as well, I've got a little grip and then he readjusts and grabs. And this hand here kind of smudges. He's got it, but then it comes back up and then it's a cushion. So it comes up and then there's a little cushion. So this is when it comes to polishing parts where you're really refining. Like as I come here, you can see here, the hand. With the hand here, it's cut, trying to follow a line of action. And then as it comes down, grabs it. And you can see the hand was all clear here, the silhouette. Then as it, as it goes up, it's dragging down the hand. So you can see the, I think of the arm and the hand is all connected. So there's a little S shape there. And then the wrist delays and then it comes back, so there's a little delay. So I wanted to get like a little flick, flick like that, which I got, which I was quite happy with. And then when he, when he lands, what I've done here is, you can see that exaggeration of the stretch. The reason I did that is I wanted to continue the guitar being part of the arm. So as it comes down, the whole object is following a path leading to the arm, so it's coming back. And it gives it a nice organic flow when you do that. If you make the object, kind of part, the prop, the part of the body, like an extension. And you think of it like that, then you can kind of make a nice flow going through the whole body, including the object, the prop. But it's only for like one frame. And then I'm trying to follow the arc, as you can see, I'm trying to follow it going down and then back up. Here as well, you can see the fingers here around this area as well, these ones. I'm trying to just do the little extra detail, right? That that you sometimes might neglect, but you shouldn't really. And then it lands. Comes up and lands down, that's it. And then there's a bit more cushion in the head as well, as it comes down. And also the leg here, this leg comes up and as it catches, Bam, comes down. So you got you get that kind of weight. Bam, coming down. So the walk as well. Coming up and then back down. So that's that's more or less my process. Uh, so recent shot I did about 
couple of weeks ago. Uh, I just wanted to show you my process. Uh, every single shot is more or less the same process. So it's all about practicing. And I did a first pass of this with an idea and it looked really robotic. And I normally know my first one isn't going to be that good. I looked at it again and I thought after three hours, I thought this isn't right. So I scrapped it and I did it again. Don't be afraid to do that. Scrap your work and do it again. I did the first pass, uh, did it all, blocked it all out, refined it. Then I left it for a day, came back the next day to have a look, see how it is. And I showed a few of my friends, you know, you get some feedback here and there, see what they think. To show about three or four people, I would say three people. If they say similar things, then you know you're on the right track. Just get a bit of feedback. But uh, I really enjoyed this one. It's a nice, simple animation mental rig. I'll put the uh, link in the description for that. You get it free, good rig to play with. Um, it was fun because it was a personal project. So yeah, I just wanted to share my process and how I go about doing it. Uh, in my fundamentals course on Skillshare, you can check it out on Udemy as well. Skillshare would probably be better because there's so many other courses out there you can learn. I talk, you know, people talk about some of the students say that it can be a bit, well, I've, I've had like one person say it can be a bit repetitive because I keep talking about the bouncing ball. But when you look at the animation and when I break it down, every single animation that anyone does, they'll always be thinking about that, the bouncing ball, the hips, making sure it moves smoothly in an arc, because that's the key fundamental. If you can really grasp that, as I say all the time, you know, if you can grasp that, then you can get your animations looking a lot more organic, which is what you're aiming for. Of course, if you're doing rob robots and stuff, it's a bit different, but generally speaking, you know, you're getting those, you want those nice fluid movements. And that's that's how you go about you. You get all your poses in, make sure the hips are driving the action and it's it's the center of gravity and it's working well in arcs. You know, it's it's transitioning from one pose to another, easing in, easing out. However you however your poses are, whatever poses you favor, making sure you get all that right. So you're posing everything out, then you're going back checking the hips all right is this working properly breaking it down break down more poses in there get the arcs of the hips working right then slowly refining that and then once you start getting that all hips driving perfectly then the rest of the body you can just animate that straight ahead as you go because you know the main driving force is working right it's it's functioning well the weight shifts are happening all properly then from there on it's just about polishing and applying the principles of the juice box, as we say, or, you know, as the pendulum some, some use, you know, for the root and then the upper body and the middle body, upper body, the root, as we talked about in the juice tutorials, coming and then just catching up with the hips. It's very simple stuff, but, you know, simple stuff is the hardest thing to learn, right? So anyway, guys, just keep practicing, have fun with it, break it down into small pieces and you will start to enjoy the process more when you do that so i hope you enjoyed that little explanation of a little project that is i'm doing a creature i'm doing a creature animation at the moment where i'm getting two creatures maybe two creatures to uh, fight or one creature coming through and a little human character jumps up with a sword and cuts the lip or something i'm just thinking about some ideas at the moment but uh, i will show you that process too when i do that with the creature and the camera and what have you make it more dynamic uh, but yeah I hope you found that useful. If you did, please like, share. If you think anybody else would find that useful, please share. Thank you for your support. The channel is growing. Uh, thank you. I'm very thankful for that. And I will be doing more videos. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Happy animating. Stay healthy.